one thing many don't talk about is the mental health effects these brothers go through. Mama Duck said TB checked into a mental health hospital twice after Brick and Poppy died. And one time took her to Brick's cutout and said, Brick wanna talk to you. I believe Mama Duck. I don't think she would have lied about something like that. Sometimes ecstasy, molly, bars, weeds, ah, whatever. They taking blues, whatever. It's just not enough to quiet the demons. Most gangbangers just want to sell drugs, have sex with women, drive nice cars, and be able to have fun all day. It's that goofy tough stuff that got everybody acting all crazy. You know, don't nobody want to be put in the same library as a punk. Don't let a crowd of people be around. You will mess around and get a nigga killed. Just because you don't want no one to get the best of you. There is a super thin line between acting tough and being bold. But everyone has a boiling point. It was January the 23rd, 2017. A young man is lurking the hood where the ops usually hang in search of a lick. On the 8,000 block of South Marquette, Chicago. After walking for a while, he came across an op. He thinking it's sweet. George Barnes, aka G.I. Joe, approached the boy about 11.25 p.m. January the 23rd and demanded money, police said. He then shot the boy multiple times. The boy was taken to the Northwestern Memorial Hospital. where he survived. George Barnes, who also lives in a South Chicago neighborhood, was taken into custody at 3.22 p.m. Monday in the 6300 block of South Vernon. George Barnes, AKA G.I. Joe from TW, and Shakira Barnes, AKA K.I.'s twin brother, he is currently serving his time in jail. Y'all think the police don't know what y'all doing? And who are the ones doing it? Y'all are in for a big disappointment. They do. They just haven't gathered or ascertained the right evidence to convict anyone. They know a lot about everything and all these gangs. Who is beefing with who, the heavy hitters, the small fries, all that. They don't want probation cases. They want to make lifers out of these individuals. That's why they sit back and let them do the petty crimes. They let them do it. But with the surge in technology, I pray for the world. Because we are about to be hit bombarded with an enormous amount of different technical advances in a mass array of technologies. Just think of it as life, as we know it, about to get hit with an insurmountable amount of steroids. And everything that we hear, see, feel, or fathom will be affected by this. Ethical code is programmed to keep me from ever doing anything to hurt anyone. Motherfucker, bro. Not just. This is a, a model I chose with my life. I'd rather have it. I'd rather be locked up than dead, bro. You know what I'm do saying? You, do you um, represent Tukaville? Oh, to the fullest. That's what, that's what I do it for. That's what it's always been about since day one. Just took it. Like, my homie was 15 years old when he got killed. Never hurt nobody. Never did nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact, like, Niggas feel like, oh, they can get to us by disrespecting, bro, you know what I'm saying? They know that's what get us riled up and shit, you know what I'm saying? When niggas was coming in the county, was niggas saying, smoking took and all that disrespectful bro, shit? on some real shit, bro. This how real it is, bro, you know what I'm saying? Now, it might go on on the deck with a whole lot of ops, bro. Meet Matty Herring, a.k.a. Hattie. A 19-year-old soul hailing from the heart of E-Block in Chicago, Illinois. The streets now echo with his name. 
a testament to the indelible mark he left on his community. In the world of Hattie, his essence is painted with hues of humility, loyalty, and love. Beyond the concrete jungle, he wasn't just a face in the crowd. He was a beacon of affection and respect for those around him. In the intricate dance of the streets, he transcended the roles of a mere member of an adversary. He was a memory etched in the hearts of those who cherished him. Education was a parallel journey for Hattie. Navigating both Kennedy King College and Paul Robinson High School, Despite his 19 years, his appearance betrayed a youthful visage that lingered in the minds of anyone who glimpsed his photos. It's an eerie realization that beneath the veneer of age, he remained a kid at heart. Now, his name, Hattie, resounds through the corridors of E-Block, a constant reminder of a young soul whose presence continues to weave through the fabrics of the neighborhood. As the Lost Files unveil his story, the memory of Hattie lives on, bells ringing every time thoughts turn to E-Block. Hattie Way was also seven dudes. He used to be real close with Saw Block, Joe City. He was posted on their block a lot. They claimed he was given 400 East Gang hell. And he was real close with Wolski and Nello too. He also hung with STL and TW members. This is one of his last photos we got when he was 19. Hattie was characterized as a humble, loyal, and affectionate young man. Beyond his involvement in the street life, he garnered immense love and respect from those around him. To his loved ones, he was more than just a member of Adversary. He remains unforgettable in their hearts. It was August the, 20, it was August the 27th, 2016. Hattie and another boy, 16 years old, was standing outside of 71st Meat Market on the corner of 71st and Rose Ave a little after midnight. Maddie and the other boy crossed the street when a boy shouted out calling them, Y'all some hoes, y'all some hoe ass niggas. The pair then said what? They walked back across the street and began to fight with the two boys. The other boys then began to pull out guns and shoot at Maddie and the 16 year old hitting Maddie multiple times. He later died at the hospital. The other kid survived. Slime. Like, I don't even play with him. Like, I don't even play when it comes to him. Like, yeah. my bitch can't even say anything crazy about him. You feel me? Like, that's like, no homo. You feel me? That's just my dog. You feel me? So it's like, Anybody like, fuck them, don't play like these niggas right here, fuck these niggas. They don't play about Wussy gang. We don't like, none of these niggas right here play about shorty though, fuck, like on no level, like fuck the internet. When it comes to the street shit gang, like on my dead, we really, really wanted to put it up. Like on my dead sister, like we really wanted to put it up though. So it's like on Hottie, so it's like, when niggas like you play. Folks off, like ain't that wrong with him. Jarvis Hayes, also known as Big J, was identified as the perpetrator in Maddie's tragic demise when he was just 17 years old. In 2016, Jarvis was apprehended during his high school gym class, and he has been in custody ever since. A member of the Black Disciples from 400 East, Jarvis received sentencing in 2018 initially slated to serve in a 15-year-old term for Maddie's murder. As per the current projections, Jarvis is expected to be released on April the 18th, 2026, completing a total incarceration period of eight to 10 years. 
Y'all wanna know why he didn't get that many years for the murder of Hattie? AKA Maddie? That's because the police knew Hattie was out there. His name probably kept coming up after certain murders or shootouts. They just never had nothing to stick him with. They didn't have enough evidence. So when he got killed, they didn't have sympathy for him. They had sympathy for the shooter. It's crazy how things work. It's crazy how things work. It was 2018, August the 7th, on the 9100 block of South Cottage Grove Avenue. Hattie's brother from Taekwon World and E Block was waiting at the bus stop or slanging dope when someone walked up to Derek Hall, aka Little DJ, and shot him once in the neck and twice in the back. He later died on the way to the hospital. R.I.P. to the fallen. <laughs>